So Carl, I had this student who would record my lectures and then listen to them while she slept in order to learn the material. Well, I used to do that. That works, right? Uh, no, we don't learn when we sleep. Well, I'll bet your lectures at least help put her to sleep. Yeah, probably. But there are a lot of myths about the brain, intelligence, about how we learn. These can be real barriers to learning. Let's look at a few myths. So this short video is about myths. Myths about learning, about college, and about how the brain works. I'm giving you this lecture because these myths can act as barriers to you succeeding in college. So let's take a look. So the first one is kind of funny. It's the fact that a lot of people think we only use 10% of our brain. A recent poll asked college students about what percentage of the potential brain power do they think that people use, and about one-third answered only 10%. We see this myth in movies. For example, this movie with Scarlett Johansson, Lucy gets this strange chemical in her system that makes her use all of her brain's capacity. And Morgan Friedman plays the professor who talks to an audience about what would happen if we could reach the 100% of our brain's capacity. Let's imagine for a few moments what our life would be like if we could access, let's say, 20% of our brain's capacity. This first stage... Well, the truth is, is we use the whole brain. You know, the brain is a use-it-or-lose-it system. While the brain makes up only about 2 to 3% of our body's weight, it uses 20% of the body's energy and oxygen. In other words, if it's not being used, it's extremely wasteful. Here's another brain myth, that there are right brain and left brain people. Right? So if you're a left brain person, then you think mathematically and you're a scientist. But if you're right brain, you're creative and you're an artist. Now, you see these kind of tests all over the internet. Are you a right brain person? Are you a left brain person? It's going to tell you what career you should go into. Now, it's true that there is some lateralization in function of the brain, right? The left visual field is more processed by the right hemisphere, and the right motor cortex controls the left side of the body. The left hemisphere tends to play a larger role in language comprehension and production, and the right hemisphere tends to be a little bit more sensitive to emotional interpretation. But you have to understand that the left and right brain are communicating back and forth. Here's a little test. So is this face happy or sad? Most people will say sad. What about this one? Most people will say that this face is happy. That's because this side of the face is being processed by the right hemisphere. However, there is no evidence that people's personality or people's nature are more left brain and right brain. There's been lots of studies. This study, for example, looked at 700 different MRI studies of people ranging from the age of 7 to 29 to look to see if there were systematic differences between people in left brain and right brain, and there is no evidence of that. Another very common myth is known as learning styles. Right? So some people are visual learners, others are auditory learners, they learn better by hearing, some learn better by writing, and some are, have to interact, kinesthetic, interact to learn. Right? This is sometimes known as the VARC model. It's very common. It was originated by a guy named Neil Fleming, who was a school inspector in New Zealand, who just noticed that some students did better in some classes than the others. He called these preferred learning styles. But he conducted no experiments. He didn't test any hypotheses. A recent survey found that about 90% of educators think that students learn best in their own style of learning. I'm sure you've got that when you were in elementary school and high school. It's really a common myth. And there's all these surveys online to see if you're a visual learner or an auditory learner. But there's been a lot of research in this area. A typical research in looking at learning styles takes a bunch of kids or a bunch of college students and you do some assessments and you ask them questions and you categorize them or they categorize themselves as visual learners, 
Maybe these are the visual learners and these are the auditory learners. And then you divide them up randomly and half of the group learns a lesson visually, even if they were visual or auditory learners. And half of them get that information through speakers, auditory learning. And one would expect these results. The visual learners would do better when given the lesson visually, and the auditory learners would do better if they got the lesson through speakers. But time and time again, we find that there is no difference in outcomes, whether somebody is considered a visual learner or an auditory learner or kinesthetic learner. But this can create a lot of barriers to learning. If somebody was told, I'm a visual learner, and all I do is listen to my professor, or I do labs which are kinesthetic, I don't learn that way. And so it becomes a conf confirmation bias, and people don't learn when, in fact, they really aren't learning styles. Experiment after experiment, research after research has shown that the learning styles of people is just a myth. So let's end with just a couple of other myths. One, the myth that there are race differences in intelligence. There are not. First, there are no biological definitions of race. There aren't genetic races. And so any research in this area, by its nature, is flawed. There's been lots of really good books on this, and the books are mostly not on whether there are race differences, but just on the discriminatory nature of this assumption and the research involved. I always wonder if there's maybe two or three genes that go into skin color, how could that in any way relate to the over thousands of genes that probably influence intelligence? Another myth is that we should always go with our first answer on a multiple choice question. Go with your gut feeling, never change your answers. Well, this turns out to be a myth as well. If you're a little uncertain about the answer, think about it, come back to it, because most change to answers are from incorrect to correct, most. And finally, there's the myth that professors don't like to be disturbed during their office hours. That's not true at all. We'd love it when students come by, ask questions about the class, or just chat about other interests. So knock on my door and let's chat. All right, good luck.